Well, I, I hate to start on a negative note, but would you concede that defensive errors and turnovers are starting to become really costly for the team as a whole? I think it's uh, those parts of the game are quite costly for any team, and uh, I know the stats say that we're in the bottom part of the ladder for that, and uh, we've addressed that in our mid-season review. Unfortunately, didn't rectify it on the weekend. Um, but yeah, it's uh, the game's sort of built around playing consistently over the whole game. But if you if you give the opposition three or four goals um, and lose by two, it's, uh, you don't have to be a math genius to work that out. Given Port Adelaide's gap now, there's a two game gap between you guys and an eighth spot. Can you describe just how pivotal, how crucial this game is on Saturday night? Well, there's, there's nine games left. Um, again, mathematically, we need to win six or seven at least. And uh, if we can win nine, then we don't have to rely on other sides to, to lose. Um, at playing Adelaide's an eight point game. Uh, they're on equal points. Um, so really important for us to, uh, to, to play as consistently as we have been over the last two weeks and uh, minimise those defensive errors and, and uh, capitalise when we're going inside 50. Do you as a player group address the circumstances that you're in now, or do you leave it to follow the coaching staff? Has the players gotten together and realised where you're at for the next couple of games in particular, this one and then the do? Yeah, I think Blind Freddy knows where we're at. So we, we, uh, we're acutely aware of, of what we have to do. Again, the mid-season review revealed a lot of uh, things we need to work on as a, as a playing group and equally as a, as a coaching staff. And um, our training's uh, definitely increased, the intensity and the, the quality's increased over the last fortnight. Um, I think that's been indicative of how we've played the last two weeks as well. Unfortunately, we haven't won, uh, but we need to, uh, to make, remain consistent. And uh, I, I think that, I believe, I truly believe that our, our game plan and the way we play is conducive to, to winning Games, at least seven games in the last in the last nine. So the standout change over the last fortnight has been the tackle pressure. It's almost like it's gone up 20, 25 percent. And you can see the old press that you had going in 2011, 2012 was in operation for a long period of time against Essendon. Was that perhaps the clearest focus and change that you instituted over the, the break? The need to increase that intensity and pressure on the opponent. Yeah, look. The, to be fair, there was a myriad of different things that we addressed, um, that being one of them. Our tackling pressure was actually quite good in the first half of the season. I think we were sitting second. Maybe the, uh, our press was one of the areas, working um, a bit more collectively. And uh, having that, um, that mentality that you're going to get support from, from the weak side or from, from, your, um, from your teammates. So, uh, again, it's highlighted constantly, uh, tackling and intensity are, are a mindset and for us the last two weeks it's, um, it's showed that our mindset's been right. You've had some soft tissue issues this year and you're getting to that age where they can be, become a problem. You, you're confident in your ability to sort of be able to see yourself through them and, and get a full pre-season on and, uh, and plough on for the hit next year. Yeah, I'm not really looking at next year just yet. There's still a fair bit of footy to go go ahead. Um, like I said, we uh, by no means have written off this year at all. Uh, I've had a, a good training block of four weeks before the last two games and uh, feel physically as, as good as I've felt for a long time. Um, and in terms of gameplay, touch is probably off a little bit and that'll come hopefully over the next couple of weeks. But uh, the confidence in my body uh, comes from being able to do the work and uh, I've been able to do that the last four or five weeks and uh, we'll get the next sort of nine, 10, 11, 12 games out, out of the way and then I'll worry about doing the pre-season. Did you have a recurrence? Was it, was it quad, wasn't it? The main issue. Did you have a recurrence of that this year? Um, it's been a few niggles. So there's, there's, there was a calf, a quad, a um, bit of groin. So it's just gradually working its way up to the nether region, unfortunately. <laughs> so, um, so we, look, we decided to, to do a, a, a mini training block and uh, the last two games I've pulled up really fresh. I've been able to get the training in during the week and, uh, and not just rely on um, my base fitness to get through a game and then hope the body pulls up well. So to answer your question, yeah, there, there was a, a recurring, recurring um, quad injury.
But uh, we spoke to Simon before, and he sort of felt like that for the remainder of the season or until the finals are still in the picture that they'll get your team to go experience. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you think you need that experience back in the lineup, or do you think maybe a few young guns and a few youngsters might just bring a step into your game a little bit? Yeah. Well, I think the media and, and us as a player group and the community as a whole uh, have heard from John Worsfold enough to know that he'll just pick the best 22. And whether it's Simon Tunbridge, Andrew Embley, doesn't matter about games played, experience, time on list. It's whoever's going to be the best for us for 2013. Uh, we're very, very much focused on, on this season, what's, uh, what's going to hold us in best stead coming into the finals week to week. Uh, very cliche, I know, lot, but it's uh, it's the, it's the reality of it. And again, um, the dealings with with John are that we'll play our best team week in week out. Early indications. Sorry, sorry. Do you think John Walsall stay on the coach next year? Yeah, not really my position to to make a judgment. I think he's suited to the job. I've only had one coach in my career, um, and I feel as I've I've blossomed somewhat under. Under his direction, he's um, an inspirational leader at at, uh, at the least. He's, uh, I guess, an absolute champion of the of the club, and he does so much for the Western Australian community and the footballing community. So for me, I'd like to see him go on, um, but again, it's not not my call. I know there's a lot of different factors that come into play, and he's uh, he'll make the best choice for for himself, his family, and and the football club. Again, you think some players, would you be one in particular, given the glowing endorsement, would you go to them and say, what's going on, why don't you stay on, we want you to, or something like that, would you, as a player group, would individually encourage him to do so? Uh, I reckon I'd probably get that wry smile that he gives people, that just sort of like, get out of my office. <laughs> 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 but um, look, if it, came, if it came down to... John needing to be persuaded, if, if one of the factors was whether the senior players wanted him to stay on, then, then of course we would endorse him. Um, but at this, at this stage, I'm not aware of that being a, being a factor. Just back on the best 22, how yeah. frustrating has it been with the spate of injuries and the lack of continuity in terms of personnel decisions? Yeah, yeah, very. Uh, it actually has been, and, and uh, it doesn't take away anything from the other guys that are coming to the side. And we've um, we've done a great job of developing a, a list that has great depth, um, and that's been tested at times this year. Uh, we uh, recruited Sherrod Wellingham on the basis that he create uh, a bit more of mid midfield pres presence. Unfortunately, he's only played the couple of games. So as a list, uh, to get the continuity play together um, and then create that, uh, I guess it's tougher for players playing in the waffle that keep, need to keep performing, which they are at the moment, but um, yeah, it's, yeah, I guess simply it has been tough, yes. What do you know about uh, Luke Shuey's prospects this week and also Sharon coming back? Yeah, I'm not 100% sure on Luke. We've got uh, our first training session this afternoon. Uh, we've got uh, skills and then Wednesday, so he'd have to tick off on both of those. Um, and then with Sharrod, it's a question of whether A, he's playing, B, whether he's playing AFL or Waffle, and what his role will be, how many minutes, all those sorts of things. Bo, do you have an opinion on the way Joe Watson was treated the other night? Uh, not a whole fast one. I, I think it outlines a few things. Um, one, it outlines the, the passion of Western Australian or West Coast supporters. Uh, they're, they've been great supporters of our team for a long period of time. Uh, I think it also highlights the character of Joe Watson, uh, for him to play that game under, under the duress that he's obviously under is a, is a credit to himself. And, and uh, from all reports, his leadership around the club have, has been inspirational over the last 12 months. Uh, after probably his 15th touch, I was going to ask him to stop because it seemed like it was making him play better. But um, yeah, again, from the West Coast Eagles supporters' perspective, they're obviously quite passionate about about their team and about us winning. I think it's a it's a great thing uh, in Australian sport that, that we are um, so passionate about success and, and our teams, and, and it really creates that brand that the AFL's got. Do you have players that get booed? 
Uh, we got players that get booed by our own supporters. <laughs> Eat their own young. <laughs> uh, we, um, of course, of course, and it's uh, it's great. It's it's a, it's uh, one of those things that again you know that you're at the top of of what you're trying to do, and and uh, you know that you're uh, in that maybe that case that you're resented, whether it be. On the weekend at Simmons Stadium, um, Ryan Crowley and, and Hayden Ballantyne were both booed, and they're, they're both great players. They're great role players within their team, and they'd be highly respected by their teammates. So, in some respects, it's it's a compliment.